Hi, my name is Dr. Katherine Nizola. I'm a pediatric neurosurgeon in New Jersey. Some of my friends asked me to make a little video about Chiari malformations. There are many different kinds of Chiari malformations. So as always, it's best to talk to your neurologist or neurosurgeon about what kind of Chiari malformation that you have and what's the best treatment for you as an individual patient. But I will review some of the basic things about Chiari malformation so that hopefully it helps you understand some of the things that your doctor may be explaining to you. So let's look at this picture here. This is a side view of an MRI of the upper part of the cervical spine. Just like an apple has a stem, the brain has a stem. This is the lower part of the brain stem which connects to the spinal cord. Right behind the brain stem is a part of the brain that we call the cerebellum. The cerebellum has many different functions in the brain. The cerebellum has a part called the cerebellar tonsils. You can see this right here. Normally, the cerebellar tonsils end up here in the skull, but on this MRI, you can see that this patient has low lying cerebellar tonsils. Sometimes when you have a condition like a Chiari with low lying cerebellar tonsils, you can develop a cavity or a fluid filled syrinx in the cervical spinal cord. This is a syrinx or a fluid filled cavity in the spinal cord. Sometimes patients with syrinxes have different symptoms from your typical Chiari patient. When you look down here, you can see more normal looking spinal cord. One of the things that doctors look at when they look at an MRI of someone with a Chiari is to see how far below the foramen magnum the tonsils go. This is a model of a baby's skull. You can see at the bottom of the skull, there is a hole. This hole is called the foramen magnum. In Latin, foramen means hole, and magnum means large. So through this large hole, typically exits the cervical spinal cord that you see here. The cerebellar tonsils here are not supposed to be coming out through the hole in the bottom of the skull. However, in patients with Chiari malformations, through the frame and magnum comes not only the top part of the cervical spinal cord, but also the cerebellar tonsils. What happens then is then there's not a lot of room for the cervical spinal cord because normally if this space is used just for the spinal cord and now you have the cerebellar tonsils, also going down into that hole. This creates pressure on this part of the spinal cord. Some neurosurgeons feel that the syrinx develops because of this pressure. Some neurosurgeons feel that these cerebellar tonsils block the normal circulation of spinal fluid and that's why the syrinx develops. However, in any case, if you have a Chiari malformation, it's best that you talk to your neurologist or neurosurgeon about what kind of Chiari malformation you have and what's the best treatment for your Chiari malformation.